Hey guys, this is Jeebus, and this is my first audio commentary for WorkRepreplace.com. Um, first of all, I'd like to um, kind of let you get to know me a little, and I'm going to kind of go through a little staff profile, basically, uh, for me. Um, my real name is Ian Otzerhagen. I live in St. Charles, Missouri, which is basically a suburb of St. Louis. Um, I'm current, or I'm a 6'1", 200 pounds, uh, Currently in 12th grade, 15 years of age, birthday's on January 23rd. Um, so, uh, that's pretty much it about myself, I guess. Uh, so I guess we can go ahead and start up the replay and uh, get it paused up. And um, Today we have a matchup between MYM Sierra and SK Fat C. Well, I'm not sure how you pronounce his name, but I'm going to be calling him Fat through the whole uh, replay. And uh, this is basically a one of uh, three game series that I will be commentating on. Um, two of the games are actually won by MYMCR, but the other game, um, I think, or the other game was run by Fact. I actually, I'm, you might think, why are you going to commentate on that, even though that a race you're commentating on lost? I actually think you can learn more from losses than you can winning. Um, most most people. We'll just uh, watch replays and not notice the little things that make a person win or make a person lose. It's the deciding factors. And that's just what audios um, do. They help people um, look at the replay and notice the key points of the replay. Um, but besides that chat, uh, the pregame chat, go ahead and uh, get this pause 10 second mark. 1x speed and YMCR's point of view. Fog war off. Uh, we'll be on pausing real soon, so go ahead and sync up this audio if you're not already there. And we'll be on pausing in three, two, one, unpause. Okay, right here, um, you can look at MYMCR has spawn, spawned in the nine o'clock position, YFAC has spawned in the six o'clock position, um, which is a very uh, good thing for CR because he's going to need that position advantage to. Um, Constantly harasses Expo. You'll see how he does that later in the game. Um, if you look at uh, his burrow placement, his burrow placement is the best probably right here. Um, it's covering all three buildings and it's protected. That's basically what, what you want to do with your burrows. You want to have them protected and you want to have them being able to hit as many buildings as they can. And you see he's doing an early Brax build. That's just because um, you have to do that for Human vs. Orc, Lost Temple, because humans going to be uh, expanding. There's no doubt about it. Humans will expand on Lost Temple. Um, if you see right here, he's queuing up his Farce here, and he's going to be throwing up a second burrow when he gets enough food or lumber. But his creep path uh, in this is probably the best creep path you can do for a human. Uh, it he will be creeping his natural expansion with his grunt and farce here. Uh, this is a great uh, thing for two reasons. One, it clears out his natural expo so he can expand anytime he needs it. And two, um, you get level two on the farce here so you get um, chain lightning. Chain lightning is great because if if you're trying to micro back or they're trying to micro back a unit, you need that chain lightning just so you can get get that kill. It's very useful because the next battle you go in, they're going to be one rifle or one foot le uh, less than what they could have been. I mean, just chain lightning is great for picking off low hit point units. And also, the third thing I didn't even think of, it's item drops. Item drops are great from this camp, especially for human. Um, if you get a lightning shield, it totally rips apart peasants and footmen. As you can see here, he's coming down. And he summoned the wolves as soon as he got out of the altar, and you need that so the cooldowns will be done. But he's going for the control berserker first because they do the most damage. Um, he's going to reset. He's going to live as far as your tank, and then he's gonna, until he can resummon the wolves. After this, he's going to be killing the other berserker, then priest, then the uh, ogar. Um, I see the first berserker goes down. He gets sentry wards, which is pretty. It's a decent job. It's better than. Uh, or planet or uh, rejuvenation potion or whatever that is. It's pretty sucky now that since the it doesn't sell for 200 anymore. But that's been a long time ago. 
Um, but I'm not, even though uh, he cre uh, creeped and he didn't bother to uh, scout, he actually takes the wolves he was scouting with and he goes ahead and scouts with those instead of sending a peon because peons are slow and they're nub. Um, as you see here, he's gonna he's gonna start going up. To, he's gonna go to the fountain health and heal uh, because the far series it's at below half and it'll fall quick to two water mental arc made in a couple foots. So he's gonna go ahead and get that up to um, full, and he's gonna uh, continue. He's gonna try to um, start harassing Fax creeping. As you can see here, uh, he comes down and he sees that he's low. He sees that little water elemental. He goes and picks that off. Gets the experience. He's trying to pick out just whatever low he can. There's not much he he be able to pick off. He's got a pretty immense force right here. Um, he actually gets owned by an entire creep and loses a wolf, so it's basically free experience. It's not a big loss, but it's just a little more experience for our mage can have. Um, as you can see here, he's gonna try to run away, but he accidentally he's not paying attention to the front and actually gets surrounded. Which is a pretty bad loss for him, considering you need all the force. You need you need as much force as you can to stop that expansion. Um, as you notice, he did try to he did scout, and he noticed that he wasn't expanding. That's pretty weird for a human to do that. But what I've been noticing, uh, humans been been waiting. Uh, oh, usually after a scout comes, and then they go ahead and throw up that expo. It kind of catches you off guard if, if you're not scouting correctly, but it's, if you scout scout normally and you scout well, you should be able to find it. As you, but if you look back at Fax Natural Expansion, he goes ahead and he's thrown up that expansion. Um, right here, uh, Ciara's trying to take down, uh, just lower down footmen, making him take him out, making him taking, make him take them out of battle so he can uh, overwhelm them with, uh, between grunts and uh, wolves. Right here, he's gonna go ahead and try to get out, get those last kills since it's so low. And then he's gonna hit the creeps and run out of there. It just does more damage. Just what he brought that footman down to half, almost a little below half. And now he's gonna continue to uh, creep. Um, if you look back at his uh, base, he's throwing up a beast area. You might think, why would you throw beast area versus a uh, human? It's not really smart because they just get mass rifles and. Sorks and priests, and that just owns wyverns. But you gotta kind of think of this. It's um, since he knows he threw up that expo, so that means that expo is going to delay all his tech buildings, which include blacksmith, arcane, uh, even a second hero. And he's going to take advantage of this. Uh, this is basically adapting to what his opponent does. He's going to be using wyverns to constantly harass Fax base, making him either throw up, make a bunch of towers, which cost a lot of money and a lot of wood, which will further delay his tech buildings, or he's going to uh, have to stay at his base and constantly defend, which is just gives you, or gives Sierra free control of the map, which is basically what you want. You want basically free reign over the map. Who want, who doesn't? Um, he's, uh, Right here, he's just trying to uh, har harass as best as he can. He's trying to just pick out any low hit point units. And when he sees he's retreating, he's going to go ahead and head for the expansion because he wants to nullify that gold gold advantage that she, uh, that Fax going to be having from that expansion. He's coming in here. He wants to get rid of that arcane. He goes ahead and shock waves, which is an excellent shock wave. It gets most of those peasants pretty low and actually hurts the building, which is great. He's gonna come back for another shockwave, gets rid of that arcane, and now he's gonna start t finishing off these rest of these towers and he's gonna try for uh, a couple peasants' kills. Oh no, he goes for the surround instead. Um, the fact is, it's a really smart thing, and he knows he's not gonna be able to fend that off, so he goes and calls militia and he actually gets to surround with them. Um, it's not that big of a loss considering it's later in the game, because he's gonna take that grunt food he would have had and just turn it into wyvern food. Which lets them him stay in low upkeep longer, so that that it wasn't a bad loss compared compared to like the early game or the early grunts around. As you see, he's coming back again. He's not letting any he's not letting pressure up on anything because he does not want him to gain that 
opponent gain that uh, gold advantage from that expo. He loses a grunt there because his units kind of got in the way. But he really should not be fighting this fight. He doesn't really have any man on his heroes, which means no chain wave. No chain wave, that's like your your essential fighting force. Uh, or weapon against human. I mean, all those low footmen probably would have been dead or very in the red if he had a chain wave. But he, as you can see, that he's taking his wyverns and he starts focusing down the towers and low hit point peasants. This is uh, great because this forces him to get towers, and he's got to keep on making more peasants and more peasants, which nullifies that goal or that uh, expansion bonus. She comes back. He's gonna start keep on keep on keep on keep on harassing that, and he's gonna try to pull out, pull down his peasants, his weak peasants, but that just brings him out of the mine. They get slaughtered. Um, he's about to get level 300 as far as here just by killing peasants and towers and things like that. Um, basically, um, I'm lost the train of thought. Uh, sound like freak. <laughs> um, we look back at this natural expansion. He gets another grunt surrounded, which is just a pretty clumsy mistake. It, most surrounds can be prevented unless they like. Keeper of the Grove and Snare, or something like that. But as you can see, he's going to go ahead and start picking off more peasants because he, he takes advantage of Fax uh, units. Since he does not have some sufficient anti air, he's only got Archmage and Water Elementals, that's not great for fending off uh, Wyverns. So he's going to go ahead and keep on um, constantly harass that expansion so he can nullify that gold, uh, gold advantage coming out of it. And if you look back at Fax main, he went he since he went wyverns, and he knew and that made force Fax to put up towers in his main. He put up one, two, three more towers or three towers, just because the wyverns. The wyverns just forced him to use almost um, I think it's over like 120 or 210 lumber or something. It might be 180. I don't know how much human towers cost, and. That just further nullifies the ex uh, the, goal of the expansion. Uh, he comes to come down. And he co he comes try to save his expo, but it was way too late for him to come down. He should have came down a lot earlier. Um, now he's re retreating because he knows that he doesn't really have um, the uh, the standard or fighting force to defend that off because his weapon went to go went to go harass his main. So he's gonna pull back right here. And if you see, see, he's going to send a peon down to his natural expo because he, what Sierra's thinking is, he's he's pursuing me. He's got a bigger army. He's going to try to get into a battle. Right before he gets into that battle, he wants to throw up an expo. When he throws up the expo, it's basically going to allow it to get further finished, and it's going to be less. He's going to have less time to get it down before it's actually constructed. See, he comes up here, he bolts the TC, which negates the clarity and uh, solve. And right here, he's gonna. This is what he's trying to do during this battle. Okay, he comes in here, he throws a shockwave down. He gets most of his units, which is a pretty good shockwave. This is what he's trying to do with the weapons. He's trying to make backs backline advance upon his front line. It's basically he's every time the weapons are getting focused, he pulls them back, making the rifles chase them down and pulling them into the grunt. That's basically how math, mass air works. Um, the Mountain King's doing a really good job of just bolting wyverns though. Um, but um, that's basically what you ha what you have to do when you have air and they have anti-air. You want to pull it back so that anti or the anti or the back lines has to come up and um, get into your front line to attack those wyverns. And if they don't, that's just they do crazy good damage compared to grunts. They almost double, and it's piercing. So that basically it makes them either advance upon your front line with their back line, or have them just live with um, 36 to 44 piercing, which is really good. And as you can see, right when he threw up that expansion, he got to that battle. Then it let that expansion get almost halfway done, or past halfway done. That's just you just need to the timing with expansion is crucial. If you you need a time right when you're about to attack, that's and you know you can control your opponent's army. That's pressing your advantage basically. So you see, um, 
that goes ahead and uh, since or he has a footman scout um, now he knows he has that expo but it doesn't really matter it's pretty much done and he knows he has a weaker army because he had to retreat from that last battle um, since he, are, he since he does not he hasn't got that uh, the gold expan or the gold bonus out of the expansion he's not going to bother to attack yet so wait till he gets that expansion done and um then he should then he might uh, he should start an attack um just so he can overwhelm him with the the, the economic advantage so you can see he's going for the mid camp the mid camp is the best camp and the easiest camp almost on this map just because after you creep this, you have a fountain of health. The fountain of health heals your whole army to full, and it gives two great item drops. The item drops can be uh, healing wards, uh, book of the dead, and vulnerability potion, healing potion, all oh, which are all great drops, and you get two of them. Um, as you can see here, uh, he gets level three on his Tarn chieftain, critical level, and he gets healing wards. Healing wards are going to allow him to creep uh, big camps faster because he can heal while he's creeping. And um, that's basically what he's gonna do. He says he knows Sh uh, he's gonna go over to this ogre camp for a for one because he's healing wards. So that shockwave is gonna be negated by the healing wards. And two, he has air. Air is when air is pretty easy to creep with to creep this ogre camp with because the shockwave doesn't even phase the uh, wind riders. Um, you see, he's targeting the ogre lord for us because he doesn't want to deal with that chaos damage and devotion aura. Uh, crystal ball drops, which is you know, an okay drop. I mean, it's not the greatest. He probably could have got something better, like uh, cloak of flames or something. Would have been nice. Um, as you can see, uh, Fax gonna go ahead and try to attack his expansion. Um, it's been up for a little bit now. He's probably got near the um, resources he used to put it up. So he's gonna go ahead and TP, knowing he has the economic advantage. TP's in, and he's gonna actually Fax gonna actually fight this battle. He um. He starts focusing on the Wyverns first since they have the most damage output. And uh, Sierra's not doing a really good job of keeping the Wyvern in the back line. Um, he's losing a lot of them because they go down so fast to piercing, it's kind of hard. Um, right here, uh, he's just trying to focus on whatever's weak and uh, keep those Wyverns in the back line. That's what you're trying to do. Uh, it's not really working that well. He's still got um, some grunts coming to flank these rifles, which basically sends him to, or makes him retreat or come out because um, most of his units are getting to mid health um, and he's gonna go ahead and TP because he knows that if he tries to run he would have lost three or four of those rifles easily. Um, this battle was really really um, a big loss to fact just because um, and forced him to TP, he lost a lot of units, and he doesn't have the expansion bonus like Ciara does. Ciara can afford to uh, lose more units than him and be fine. As you can see, if you look at the facts, natural expansion, he just got his expansion up. Um, now he, uh, Ciara comes and sc scouts this, and um, basically he's going to totally get rid of this expo before he even gets the uh, gold advantage out of it, or try to at least. I think he... Um, he actually ends up retreating, but he's taking out all the peasants because peasants cost 90 gold and they fall real fast to wyverns and grunts and chain wave and stuff like that. Um, right here, he sees a uh, fact coming down the ramp, and he goes ahead and pulls off because he realizes he has uh, lots of extra gold, and he's going to go ahead and take that gold and spend it uh, in uh, healing scrolls and prod scrolls, which you should always do when you have an expo. You should. Um, but stack up on items like vulnerability potions, uh, TPs, scrolls of healing, scrolls of protection, etc. And uh, get upgrades too because you never want to go into high upkeep. High upkeep is horrible unless you have like three or four expansions and I doubt that will even happen unless you're in a free for all. Because I, I would never go into high upkeep. High upkeep it just ren renders your gold resources by so much. Um, you see here he's camping his uh, expansion just because he wants to try to get that gold ex uh, gold bonus out of it, but it's not going to happen. Um, if you look at the replay, it's almost over, you guys can probably tell. But uh, here he comes in with his frost scroll, goes off. Uh, he doesn't have any priest to dispel, which is kind of bad. There goes a wave off and chain, there it goes. And you can see most of it, you can tell 
most of his hit points are getting very low. If you just press all half, most of them red half. Look at all those red units just from chain. Just, just it totally rips through rifles, casters, and etc. Um, I've been, as an orc player, I've been having a lot of trouble with uh, human mass air. I don't think rifles caster is a really good thing versus orc. It totally doesn't just doesn't work compared to mass air. I think mass air is so hard to beat as orc. Um, but you, besides that, you can look at the scores. Um, pretty much sums up who won. Um, things to talk about this game. Um, one is the unit choices. The unit choices. Ciara noticed that he was going for the fast expansion, and he knows when you go for a fast expansion, your tech, your tech buildings, and your second hero are is going gonna, is gonna to be late. So he goes ahead and uses that to his advantage, and he gets the Windriders. The Windriders, again, make him put up lots of towers, which waste wood, which waste wood, which further delays his tech buildings, his tech, and his second hero. Uh, and or it's going to make him stay at his base and uh, you defend it. That which gives Sierra free reign over the map. Um, second thing, throwing up expansion. The second thing uh, that basically this game uh, really gives a good example of is throwing up your expansion at the right time. Um, Sierra basically, I think one of the side factors that made him win was when he threw up that expansion. He threw it up in the exact right time, um, right before he got into a big battle. Uh, he made um, fact retreat, which basically guaranteed his expo getting up because uh, fat, uh, because Sierra knew he had the greater advantage because he just made him retreat and he knows he has the greater army and um, basically I think that's it for this audio commentary uh, if you guys have any questions or, any, or leave feedback whatever you can uh, either aim me or PM me leave comments or whatever um, I'm always up for cybering if anybody wants to aim me I heart cyber. Um, uh, that's about it. Uh, I guess I'll see you guys later.